we'll get started. Mackenzie, you're a Hamilton native. What's it like to be back playing your country's national open in your hometown? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. I, <clears throat> I did that for the first time in 2012, and uh, 12 years later, it feels quite a bit different to do that because I don't feel uh, like there's quite a big a shock walking onto the property. I remember uh, doing it at 21 years old and being pretty wide-eyed and uh, maybe caught off guard a little bit by how big the moment was and uh, helped my own. But, yeah, playing at home is a lot of fun. There's obviously... Um, you may maybe be pulled in a few different directions that you wouldn't be pulled in uh, otherwise, but uh, I try to relish the fact that I'll have some extra cheers out there and um, a lot of a lot of friends and family. What's it like to come back and play the RBC Canadian Open every year and represent your country back and play in front of your countrymen and your and your home fans? A lot of fun. Uh, we. Amongst the Canadians, we talk about this a little bit, just in the fact that when we come back for this one week a year, you know, you, you kind of feel like a, a little bit of a star, which, um, you know, I'd say you, you go next week and it feels quite a bit different, even though it's a, it's a big, big tournament next week as well. But coming here feels different, uh, the support, and, uh, yeah, the way the fans are behind us is, is really cool. So... Um, it's probably one of the most fun tournaments to kind of get into contention for, uh, just because of how much support we have. So the last time the RBC Canadian Open was here in Hamilton in 2019, since then, the court, there have been upgrades and renovations to the course. What have you liked about them, and how do they suit your game? Yeah, the changes are nice. They definitely went away from some of the... I mean, I felt like some of the greens were... Uh, quite severe back to front and I think with the changes they've now allowed themselves to have a few more pin locations on uh, on certain holes and you know a few new tees uh, so they've added some length uh, to add some difficulty and it's, it's a great test I mean there's there was a couple times today I played uh, the front nine and uh, there's a couple pretty vicious runoffs and the, the runoffs in front of the greens and around the greens uh, are cut super tight and so they're running really fast and so you might have a ball that runs 20 30 40 yards off of a green when it was just off the green so uh that's definitely going to add, add some difficulty to it but uh overall i think the changes are great and um guys are going to love love the test this week we'll open it up for questions Hey, Mac. Um, the greens being, they look really pure, and like you said, there's these runoff areas. Uh, you're a guy that has made a lot of long putts in your career and have a, are known for your short game. Does any of that excite you that this might be a place that really sets up well for your, your style of play? Yeah, I think that any time you make uh, it harder around the greens, that uh, I think will, will benefit me. Um, now, with it playing somewhat soft early on this week. I don't know how much a lot of that will come into play, but yeah, certainly um, yeah, as the week goes on, if it dries up and gets a bit firmer and faster, I think that um, uh, it plays into some of my strengths uh, really well. And last year with Nick sort of breaking the ice and winning uh, this event, does that, you think, in any way free up other Canadians like yourself sort of seeing that it is possible to break through here and, and sort of uh, allow you maybe to get your mind into that it's, it's really possible? Yeah, I think, you know, as, as far as the, the overall weight, I think that that's uh, been lessened by uh, Nick's win. But, you know, I show up here with my own personal expectations and, and desires to do well. So I don't think that, like, I'm going to be out there thinking about because Nick won, there's no pressure on me anymore. Um, I, I put a lot of uh, pressure on myself to do well every single week. But, um, you know, coming here, I, I really enjoy playing well in front of the home crowd. And uh, so I, while, you know, we're not answering the question of, uh, you know, who will be the first to break uh, the Pat Fletcher's uh, or be the next Canadian to win since Pat Fletcher, but uh, I still think that when we come here, you know, we're all – Pretty eager to do well, um, close to home. Mackenzie, uh, I just wanted to ask you, kind of you touched on it, but that experience of 
you know, uh, being at an event and, and getting, you know, the Rory treatment, so to speak, where, you, you know, there's a gallery before you on every hole, there's people shouting your name on every hole, doesn't, doesn't necessarily happen every week on tour. How, how does that affect a player, um, just to have that kind of different experience? Yeah, I think it, it, it feels good. Um, you know, and I, I walk around this place often and think about myself as a young kid. I was here a lot as a young kid, uh, watching these tournaments in 03 and 06. And I remember thinking how cool it was back then. And I wanted to get close to the players, get autographs and all that. And now there's another generation that's trying to do that. And I'm the one signing the autographs. And um, it's really cool. I mean, like I said, we don't do it very often. And um, yeah, I think it makes you feel it makes you feel pretty good, and um, I try to make a positive impact on the people that I come across, and and uh, yeah, so it's been it's been a lot of fun this week. On a performance level, does it sort of is it something you kind of have to factor in a little bit, or once you tee it up, it's all just noise anyway? Um, no, I think that you 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 know you, you hear it, and um, it's it's a boost, a positive boost. Um, I always said like when I, I played a tiger twice and. I thought that the energy that he had in his crowds that he carried around with him, uh, I thought was worth at least a couple shots in a tournament. Um, even just playing with him. I mean, I wasn't even the one getting all the big cheers, but I just felt like the whole energy in that crowd and the atmosphere was, was uh, you could feel it. And out here this week, you know, we'll have a little bit of that uh, being Canadians. So, uh, yeah, try to try to soak it up and enjoy it and uh, feed off the crowds. Hey, Mac. Uh, just wondering if – I was curious your state of, the, your, of your game right now. I think your season, a lot of really consistent results, but is there anything specifically you're working on or anything specifically you're hoping to improve on, whether it be this week or as you look ahead to the rest of the season? Yeah, I, I think in the last uh, few months I've put together some pretty – Consistent results, uh, you know, not spectacular, but 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 pretty solid. And feel like my, um, I guess my bottom feels a bit better right now. Um, so I think that's the biggest thing for me. And then um, what's been kind of working or what I've been working on um, is just a bit of uh, a bit more efficiency to the green. So I think that for me, if, if I look at my swing. Uh, my tendency is to kind of get a little bit too lateral and I'm working on a bit of a tighter pivot off the ball and, uh, and through the ball. So trying to be a little more centered and a little, little bit less, uh, a little bit less movement. And I think that's helped me. And like I've said this before to, to many people, but if I, if I can be somewhere in the middle, I guess, strokes gain, tee to green, uh, and then kind of be myself on and around the greens, then I think that's a pretty, pretty dangerous combination. So, yeah, just trying to tighten that up a little bit. Uh, I feel like I've shown some really good signs of that lately. Um, and so, yeah, just kind of a little bit more of the same. Uh, iron play is probably the last kind of piece of the puzzle for me. I feel like off the tee, I've been quite strong lately, uh, driving it pretty good. And, um, you yeah, know, my iron play has been okay. Uh, good at good at times and, and not so good at other times. So that's probably the piece of the puzzle for me that needs to, I'd say, tighten up the most right now. Uh, but it feels pretty good so far. And, um, yeah, I'm trying to keep working at it. Um, Mac, what's your relationship like with Mike Weir and what are the kind of conversations you've had with him leading in with this being the President's Cup year in Canada? Yeah, Mike, Mike's been great. Um, you know, we text a decent amount and um, just been great at kind of, uh, you know, throwing his two cents in there. I mean, even a few times this year, he's been good at kind of, uh, I think he he knew how much I wanted to be on the team last time in Charlotte. And uh, I was in his ear a lot kind of prior to those picks. Um, I wouldn't say I was begging, but I would definitely kind of plead my case. And... Uh, you know, he knew how much I wanted, and I think it affected me last time. Uh, I had a, I had a pretty good season going, and then I think 
like the last six, seven weeks before the, the picks came in, I just didn't really play that great. And uh, I felt like that was hanging over my shoulder, you know, every day. I felt like that those, those picks were coming and I wanted to be there um, so badly. Uh, so that, that I think that affected me. And, and he's reached out uh, a few different times to just basically tell me to like, you know, to go, go play golf and to not, to not worry about it and to, you know, to kind of make sure that I'm not chasing it too hard because he knows how much I want it. So uh, that's been great. And uh, when I see him, you know, at tournaments or here this week, um, you know, it, it's, it's fun to think about how that dynamic, dynamic would be uh, in Montreal and having him as, as my captain. So, um, yeah, you know, he's been, but he's been great, you know, master's practice rounds and all that sort of stuff when he's been giving us great advice and uh, he's always there if we need something from him so I think all the Canadian Canadian guys out here now on tour kind of feel that um, sort of uh, you know godfather like figure uh, always kind of there if we need, need him. Would you have ever like watched him play at the Canadian Open as when you were a kid? Yeah so I, I think I I probably have told the story the last few years, but when I was uh, 13, uh, in, in 04 at Glen Abbey, he was, I mean, he was a rock star. I mean, he had won the Masters, come back the next year, and um, I was a caddy in the Pro-Am on the Wednesday, and I drew his group, and I, I remember vividly just, like, tailing Mike the whole day, despite having to caddy for somebody. Um, was doing a horrendous job caddying, but uh, I remember just trying to be close to Mike, hear what he had to say, and, and I asked him a few questions. And um, so that was probably my, my most vivid memory of watching him. And uh, obviously at that time, I mean, he was, uh, his popularity in Canada was, was through the roof. So uh, that was really cool and something I uh, still look back on pretty fondly. Hey, Mac, obviously uh, Paris Olympics this summer. Is that something that's sort of been on your mind watching the uh, OWGR here now, I think, three weeks? What would it mean for you to compete in Paris? Yeah, obviously know that the, that deadline's approaching and uh, what I'm going to need to do is uh, play, play great for the next few weeks. And, um, yeah, it's on my mind a little bit, uh, certainly. But, yeah, uh, I can't. Like the President's Cup, I can't push that too hard or, or try to enforce things there. Um, I'd love to, yeah, find my way past a few of these guys and be on that team. But, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I mean, obviously, it's not entirely in my hands. But, um, yeah, I'll, I'll be uh, gunning hard for that uh, one of those spots. And, um, yeah, we'll see what happens. Hey Mac, um, just the, the the nature of golf is is you know you're always chasing something and kind of hard to <laughs> hard to catch it most of the time. But how do you how do you manage that without kind of going a little I don't know nuts nutty <laughs> nutty yeah. um, just just to have it you know just always just beyond your grasp except for maybe a couple of weeks a year maybe. Yeah, I think um, I don't know. I I guess trying to keep a pretty good perspective on things. Um, you know, you can kind of get caught up in the fact that, you know, you, you hit a shot from 160 yards to 30 feet, and, you know, there are times when you hit that shot and you think, oh, that wasn't very good. And then you realize that's pretty much exactly to our average, and you think to yourself, like, all right, like, I probably don't need to beat myself up that, that bad for that, you know? And uh, I think... <clears throat> that while we're certainly chasing getting better all the time, uh, I think for me, uh, a, lot, a lot of getting better for me is like trying less, which sounds very counterintuitive. Uh, but I've always been someone that, um, you know, I'd never be guilty of not trying hard enough, but I've been certainly guilty of trying too hard at times. Uh, so I think for me, uh, especially on the golf course, uh, a lot of that is just trying to um, find that balance, uh, find the appropriate level of effort that brings out your best golf. 
and I think for me, I have to kind of find, I've, I've been doing a pretty good job lately of finding that balance. Um, I had a tournament just two weeks ago at the Wells Fargo, and I walked off on Thursday, and I felt like I was trying so, so hard to play well because I was at home in Charlotte, and I just, every day from that Thursday on, I tried to be a little bit better as far as, like, how hard I was trying and just my general care level for how I was doing. And uh, the rest of that tournament just got a little bit better and a little bit better uh, as I tried a little bit less. Um, so it's it's funny how that works, but for me, as I try to chase it, I, I sort of chase different things now. I think when I first got on tour, I was chasing uh, – trying to be more like the top players in the world physically physically and I think now knowing my game is my game and you know I can only do the best version of me uh, I think that I look at different areas now where I can be better and they're not necessarily the areas that you might think of you know that are obvious you know like for someone to say oh like you know not you're not trying as hard like that doesn't make any sense but I'm a very sort of focused and intense individual when I'm playing, and I, I need to sort of find that balance where it's not that way all the time. So a bit of a um, long-winded answer, but I think as I chase it, I chase I just chase different things, and my perspective on the whole big picture has, I think, gotten a lot better, so I don't chase things I don't think are necessary anymore. Hey, Mac, a year ago... Uh this tournament was overshadowed by what was then, you know, framed as a merger between uh, Live Golf and the PGA Tour. I just wanted to get your take on, you know, how you see the state of the game and, and, and where it's heading uh, in these uncertain times. I knew it was coming. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a, that's a big question. Um, obviously, a year later, you would have thought we had a bit more clarity on that, and um, there's not really much there. But I think eventually when we get through this situation, I think golf will be in a great spot still. But there's a lot of hurdles to get over right now, and I think one of the biggest things I think about is the fan and how the fan has been affected by all this. And the fans are just tired of hearing about it, tired of hearing about the money. Um, I don't think the money that's going around is sustainable for golf. Um, so I, I would love for the, the game to, to kind of come back a little bit where it's like we're just we're talking about the golf now. We're not talking about live we're not talking about the the money and these these purses and all that sort of stuff because people don't care people don't want to hear it um i've said this many times to you know the, me the media the tour i mean it just we we just we want to like i feel like we're shoving it down people's throats and you know this is a big tournament for me you know i'd say far bigger than the one next week, but next, week, next week's worth $20 million. This one's worth I don't know how many, whatever. But I, that's not something I care or think about. But, you know, I'm here to win this trophy, and it wouldn't matter if it was for, you know, a 1000 bucks or if it was for a million bucks. I, I'm here to play well and win this tournament. And I think it's just it's become so much about the money. And, again, I'd say... 99% of people just don't don't care. They don't want to hear it. And so, I think in the state of the state of the game, um, I'd say right now it's not super healthy, you know, because of the things we're focused on. But I think once we can kind of get past this stuff, and and maybe the deal happens or it doesn't happen, but we kind of get some clarity there, then we can kind of go forward. And um, you know, I was talking to uh, you know some of the RBC people and. You know, I think that we, as a tour, used to really strive for charity dollars, and that was a really big proponent of what we did. And now, I think that's become less of a less of an importance to us, and the priority factor for that is not quite as high. And 
to me, that was like one of the things that the tour was, it was like a badge of honor that like they, we donated more than all the other major sports days combined. And I'd like to see that become a priority again, where we really impact uh, the places that we play uh, and leave them better than we found them. So, you know, I do think that golf will come out of this okay, but right now uh, I think it's in a very weird spot and a difficult spot, and uh, we need to get a lot of things figured out. We're going to go down in front here. Hey, Mackenzie. Um, I realize this is a, a tough one to speak on, but we spoke with Rory about it, and you know, Grayson's passing is clearly something that many people in the clubhouse are still processing. Um, I thought your post on social media on Sunday was very kind of eloquent and moving, and I just wonder kind of your thoughts and perspective as the days have gone on. Yeah, that's, uh, that was really, really sad. And um, I, I came on tour in 2016, 2017 with Grayson, and I mean, he, it, was, uh, it was out there for everyone, you know, his, his ups and downs. I mean, his life uh, was well documented in the fact that there was like, he had lots of great moments and he had some moments that he would have loved, loved to have done over again, I'm sure. But uh, like I said in my post, I always felt like he had a really good heart and like wanted to help people. And I think he was doing, a, he was doing that as well by speaking about what he was dealing with. Uh, I think people realizing that professional athletes that you know are, are making lots of money are also dealing with the same things that everyone else deals with um, would resonate with a lot of people. And um, I mean, if that's going to be his legacy, that's a pretty great one to leave. That you know, it's okay to be not okay. And um, yeah, I. Thinking about his family and people close to him because I know it was so sudden, so unexpected, and uh, I know the tour now will kind of look at how we can be better there, how we can continue to help people like that that are struggling, and uh, hopefully avoid this in the future. Thanks. Appreciate you, Angela. Yeah. Any final questions? So we're all good. Thank you, Mackenzie. All right. All right. Thank you.